Now I'll peg this wooden sash joint. That's a mortise and tenon joint. It has a slot in the style. And on the rail is a tenon that fits into that slot. Mortise and tenon joint. And I'm going to peg it together with wooden pegs. So first I'll make the pegs. And to do that, I'm going to use some uh, hardwood. Here I have some uh, Osage orange uh, that I just uh, cut off a log in the fireplace wood pile. And um, here I've sliced off a piece. So the end grain is just as long as I want the pegs. So I determine how long I want the pegs by looking closely at the joint. And here's that uh, tenon coming through the mortise. And my pegs are going to come right down through like this. So they'll come down something like this. And I don't want the peg to go all the way through. So here I'm just stopping shy, about 3 sixteenths of an inch shy of the other side of the sash up under here. So for uh, drilling that hole for the pegs, I've set up my bit with a stop collar. It'll drill right down there. So when the collar just touches the surface here, that's the depth that I want. Now, usually these pegs are put in from the outside of the sash. I think the reason they did that traditionally was to keep the interior side looking better with the pegs not showing. But I like to peg from the inside. I don't mind if they show on the inside. But then the outside has two fewer holes, and I think that makes for a better weather envelope, weather resistance uh, for the sash. So the first step is to uh, make some of those pegs. First, I have to decide how big I want the pegs. And usually I make my pegs um, a quarter of an inch. But I have these nice hardwood uh, pegs that I'm going to make, so they don't need to be quite that big. I might make them a full quarter inch or maybe even five sixteenths if, if I was using, uh, let's say, Douglas fir. But here I'm using this nice hardwood that's a little stronger. So I'm going with seven thirty seconds of an inch. Here I'm just measuring that off the uh, drill bit with my uh, Vernier calipers. I'm doing that because I can use the vernier calipers to mark out my pegs. How big I want the pegs right on my peg stock here. So I'm just using the vernier calipers like a marking gauge. And I'll just uh, mark that with a pencil so you can see it a little better. So I can see it as well. So I want my pegs to be in width to be the same diameter as the hole that I'm drilling. All right. So now I'll just split off that right on that mark. With my mallet chisel. Oops, slipped off a little bit. There we go. There's one. 
I'll make a few as long as I'm at it. Wood is hard. I guess I need to mark out that line too with the pencil so that I can see it. Now I'll just pack these back into a little tablet like they were. That's how they came out of the blank. And I'll just split those off the other way. Here I'm just gonna eyeball the amount to split off. Let's see if I can give you a closer look at that. All right. So now I have some little uh, peg blanks. Now I'll trim off the arises, these little sharp edges. So that peg slides into the hole better. And while I'm at it, I'll just nick off the end. I'm not really pointing it, but I just want it. That end just nicked off a little bit. Helps guide it into the round hole. After all, it is a square peg. There's one. Now, this one's a little bit uh, wider, just the way it happened to split out. So I'm just going to trim it down on that wide part first on the flat side of the peg. Now I'll trim off those arises. and nick off the end.
Okay. So that makes a couple of nice little pegs. And you can see the end that goes into the hole is just slightly tapered and rounded off a bit. And the head that I tamp when it goes in, I've left square. So that acts like a head that helps bind into the round hole. You'll see how that goes. So let's see. Next, I'll uh, check the squareness of my uh, sash. And I'll do that with a, a long stick that's, I think you can see that, that's pointed along one end. So I'll just run that into the sash down at that corner and go diagonal across here and mark where this corner lines up with the diagonal stick. Now I'll go on the opposite diagonal. If you want to look it up in your geometry book, you can see how this indicates that and that mark lines right up with the exact corner here so that means that my sash frame is square now before i uh set the pegs i'm going to uh clamp this uh, clamp these two joints coming this way. And I, I could use a long clamp, but it's just handy at my traditional workbench here. I have it set up with pegs. And wedges. So that I can just... Uh, Tap that wedge into place, and that clamps my sash frame, tightening up the joints. Looking pretty tight. Okay, now I have to decide where I'm going to uh, drill the holes. And I do that by picturing what's happening inside the joint. So here's my uh, mortise right in here. The mortise is right in here like this. So the way I place my pins, I call it placing them on the quarters. So I draw a line diagonal and mark halfway across and a fourth of the way across. And that's where I put my two pegs. Now I like to crowd my pegs up as close to this corner as possible. Get it right in there because there's four very different materials that come together right here wood and paint and glass and putty. And they have all different expansion and shrinkage rates and hardness and flexibility. And these pieces of wood with changes in the weather are expanding and shrinking. So if I move my pins right up next to that little nexus of all those different materials, it'll expand and shrink like this, keeping that very corner where all those materials come together more stable. And that makes it more durable and weather resistant. So drilling the holes is pretty slick and quick. Mm -hmm. 
All right. And here's my pegs. Usually with these handmade pegs, they're often a little wider in one direction, a little narrower in the other. So I always put it so that the uh, wider part goes in line with the direction of the grain. That way it tends to, to split the wood a little less. A little less often. So those pegs sit nice and flush and there's uh, no trimming or anything. It's just uh, all set and ready to go. Um, let's see. Oh, one last step. So I, I always put a little linseed oil on the end of each peg. Just one little drop of linseed oil. And then I just let that sit and soak in. It's important to seal up that end grain because it can cause uh, some paint failure problems. And it doesn't if you seal it with uh, linseed oil. That's boiled linseed oil. Okay, so I'll just do the same thing down at the other joint. And then that step will be done.